You are landing. Suddenly a bright green flash lights up your cockpit and interferes with your vision. You have just witnessed a laser illumination. What do you do? Laser pointers are sometimes used irresponsibly. Incidents where lasers have been aimed in the cockpits while aircraft are in flight have increased dramatically in the past decade. Even though the FBI and Homeland Security have found little evidence that laser incidents are terrorist related, the FAA and other government agencies are very concerned about these incidents. Laser strikes bring risk to the air crew and their passengers because any laser strike can have adverse effects on the vision of the air crew and potentially their ability to safely fly the aircraft. One way to mitigate the risks presented by laser exposures is through education and training of air crew so they are prepared to successfully handle a laser event. The FAA and the U.S. Air Force have been working together to study the effects of laser exposures on air crew. They have prepared this video to increase air crew awareness of cockpit laser incidents. This video presents a brief history of cockpit laser events, explains what a laser is, why lasers can be dangerous, and the potential hazards of exposures to air crew. It will also describe several actions air crew can take in response to a laser strike. The goal is to educate air crew regarding laser events, how to react and how not to react, and how to fly the aircraft safely. Now to give us a pilot's perspective, here is retired L-1011 Delta Airlines pilot, Captain Bill Connor, Ph.D. Well, our incidents in this country are a lot more common than, than people are aware of through the news media. Uh, for the last six months, we've had over 300 incidents in this country alone, and since 2004, we've had 1,700 incidents. Now, the, the problem is that now it is spreading worldwide. We've had reports uh, in uh, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and Japan. And I think thus far that we've never had a, a very serious injury, and also we have never had a, an accident where uh, we've lost an aircraft or damaged an aircraft due to uh, uh, laser illuminations. But because we haven't lost one, doesn't mean that the potential is not out there for a very serious incident to happen. Both airplanes and helicopters have been targeted, usually during the most critical phases of flight, approach, landing, and takeoff. Lasers are a threat to air safety, and steps have been taken by several countries, including the U.S., to enact legislation defining penalties for purposefully illuminating aircraft and to punish individuals who do so with fines and or jail time. In fact, several states in Australia have banned laser pointers and imposed mandatory jail time for possession without a lawful reason. Laser strikes have become increasingly common events since the 1990s. Many earlier incidents were accidental illumination from laser light shows. That problem was solved by the laser entertainment industry, the FDA, and the FAA working together to establish regulations and procedures to minimize the probability of laser exposures to air crew from these shows. Regulations were implemented restricting laser shows to project into critical zones around airports. Laser shows are now required to obtain a letter of non-objection from the FAA and are required to plan their shows and control their lasers to prevent aircraft illuminations. Unfortunately, the gap in laser incidents left by regulation of the light show industry has been more than filled by persons in the private sector shining lasers at aircraft. Most laser incidents are believed to be nuisance or pranks and primarily involve laser pointers. Nearly everyone knows what laser pointers are. They are handheld devices used to point to objects projected on a screen during a presentation. They are also used outdoors to point out objects in the night sky. The most common laser colors are green and red, but other colors are also available. Laser pointers are inexpensive and available online and at retail outlets like Radio Shack, Office Depot and Office Max, and can be purchased by anyone. Laser pointers are Class 2 or 3R devices. Class II lasers have a maximum output of 1 milliwatt or 1 1,000th of a watt. They are safe because of the blink reflex that naturally happens when we are suddenly exposed to a bright light. Class 3R devices have an output between 1 to 5 milliwatts. 
The maximum permissible exposure, which is a safety standard, can be exceeded with Class 3R pointers even with the blink reflex if the beam is close to the eye or the focus is maintained at one spot. However, the chances of damage to the eye are still small because the maximum possible exposure is below the damage threshold. Most of the laser incidents have occurred in the early evening between 7 and 11 p.m. or at dusk and at night. Lasers pose the highest flight risk at night because the dark adapted eye is many times more sensitive to light and the laser is much brighter relative to the background than during the day. I think the, the thing that makes the laser beam so dangerous is that where we have encountered the laser illuminations is in the critical phases of flight. And the critical phases of flight uh, are the basically the approach and landing and takeoff. These are areas where there is a very high workload on the crews, not only a vision workload, a hearing workload, a uh, procedural workload, uh, and you're also low to the ground and, you, and maneuvering the aircraft to the airport. Now, with other light sources, uh, like light bulbs or searchlights, uh, things like that, the, the rays or the light is dispersed uh, very quickly. But with a uh, laser, its technology uses a very highly collimated beam of light. And when, once this enters the eye, it, it can be magnified up to 100,000 times back onto the retina. Let's talk a little bit about lasers. As you can see, lasers come in all shapes and sizes. However, they are all electronic optical devices that emit light that is concentrated in a very narrow beam. This means a lot of energy in a little space. Different types of lasers emit at different wavelengths. The human eye can see light with wavelengths between 400 and 750 nanometers. Different wavelengths are associated with different colors as shown in the illustration of the spectrum. Although the eye can see all of these wavelengths, it is not equally sensitive to them. The sensitivity of the eye to bright lights is greatest in the middle of the spectrum, or in the green to yellow regions. Because of the differences in sensitivity, a green laser will appear many times brighter than blue or red lasers of the same power. What makes a laser potentially dangerous is the amplification of light by the optics of the eye. Even a laser pointer emitting just 5 milliwatts can appear blindingly bright. Other factors that contribute to how dangerous a laser can be are how powerful the laser is, which roughly equates to its brightness, its wavelength, which we already know favors green lasers, how long the exposure is, how much the beam diverges or spreads out, and the distance from the laser. Divergence and distance are two important factors in airplane laser incidents. Because of divergence, as you move away from the laser, the diameter of the beam is increased which distributes the light energy over a wider area, and as an end result, decreases the amount of light that can enter the pupil of the eye and cause visual effects. Exposure duration is another important factor since the longer the exposure, the more light is absorbed by the retina and the chance of damage increases. Fortunately, in a cockpit scenario, it is most likely that the laser strikes will be brief and appear as flashes. This is due to the fact that it is difficult to handhold a laser on a target at long distances. Even a large stationary object like a water tower is difficult to hit, even though, because of divergence, the beam is quite large. The hazards to the air crew are primarily to the retina of the eye, not the skin, the airframe, or avionics. The laser strikes on aircrew occur at distances that are well beyond the hazard distances for skin. As for the airframe, the only lasers currently capable of causing damage are military lasers that cost hundreds of millions of dollars and that are still in development. The effects that visible lasers can have on the eye and vision range from nothing more than the appearance of a bright light to severe and permanent physical damage to the eye. In the scenario of cockpit laser illuminations, permanent physical damage to the eye is highly unlikely. The lasers involved in cockpit laser strikes, for the most part, will not cause physical damage to the eye due to variables such as length of exposure, intensity, and or proximity. On the other hand, even lasers no more powerful than laser pointers are very capable of causing non-permanent visual effects that include startle, distraction, glare, and flash blindness. It is the visual effects that lasers can produce that are the greatest threat to aircrew. 
Well, the problem you, you run up against with a, a laser uh, illumination is the, the unexpected uh, of the laser illumination. And, and the pilot's response, uh, as we've had in one of our previous laser illuminations, was the pilot thought another aircraft had come into his airspace with the landing lights on. And of course, this created an enormous startle effect. With startle, uh, this is a, a, an involuntary response to an unexpected event. And with this, it, it alters your uh, physical, visual, and mental aspects as the way that it changes your, uh, your, your uh, attention uh, away from the normal flight path of the airplane uh, while you're trying to find out exactly what's happened to you and have any idea that it happened to the rest of the crew and do you have any idea how long this is going to be, uh, that your vision is going to be impaired. So with this, it, uh, with the conditioning, with uh, on startle uh, recognition and response, you have four phases that you go through. And one phase is distraction and disruption, disorientation and incapacitation. Now, in distraction, if you've been trained well enough, when you recognize the laser illumination, it can be just distraction, which is just a momentary attention shift away from the primary flight task. If it's a uh, disruption, this means an extended uh, time away from your primary flight task that you're having to have dedicated uh, selective attention to re reestablish your normal, uh, normal control. Now when you get into the disorientation where a person at that point will probably be in some type of a turn with the aircraft to where they're not really flying straight and level and, and when this happens the, the person uh, loses the perspective of their situation awareness as far as uh, our spatial awareness of the uh, between the direction of flight and the surroundings. And this just starts to get to be very critical. And it finally evolves over into incapacitation. And this is where the crew member has lost not only uh, situation awareness, but spatial orientation uh, with reference to the outside world. And the incapacitated crew member should immediately transfer control of the aircraft to the, to the other pilot because it, uh, he no longer can reliably determine the aircraft's altitude, attitude, or direction of flight, which becomes very critical.